Hey, thanks for joining us today on this Christmas Day. We are really glad that you have taken a few moments out of your day to be with us. I want to say Merry Christmas from the whole Gaskew family. You're here in our home. And we just wanted to take a moment to um, share with you uh, a devotional. And, and I wanted to talk to you about waiting. And waiting is a word that doesn't conjure up really fuzzy feelings in our life. In fact, it probably brings a little frustration. And what I discovered about waiting in, in, in the Advent season is there are two types of waiting. First is the waiting that you have when you are sitting in the dentist's office and you're waiting to have a root canal. That's not a really good type of waiting. You know, that brings really great frustration. And for some of you, you're feeling your anxiety level rising, just me talking about it for a moment. And then I realized that there's another type of waiting. And it is a waiting that has a whole different feel to it because of the outcome of it. So I told you that I was going to bring a special guest with me today. And, and so who I have with me is my granddaughter, Sayla. And I want to bring her out. Reba's going to bring her out and I'm going to put her on my lap and hopefully we can uh, keep her occupied for just a moment and um, use her as we talk about waiting. And, and she, her, her bow is down over her face and, and we'll get it. And, is that Merry Christmas? Yeah. And there she is, yeah. Um, this is Sayla, and she is the, uh, she belongs to Brad and Marcy. And she's our youngest of our three granddaughters. And so I talked about the two types of waiting. The first is what I talked about. If you're at the dentist's office waiting at a root canal, it's really different, right? And then there's the waiting here. And so for those months when after Brad and Marcy told us that they were going to have a baby, then we began that waiting process. But that waiting was a little different because that waiting was a waiting with anticipation. And when I say that, what I mean is that it comes down to the object of waiting in our life. It really does. That's what makes it all different. Because waiting that root canal, you're going to have pain and, you know, there's going to be some suffering there. But waiting on this, Miss Sayla, is a waiting that is flavored with a great anticipation of something better in life. So here's my thought. Where did waiting begin anyway? And so I, I gave that some thought this week. And what I realized is that prior to sin in the Garden of Eden, there was no waiting. If you read the scriptures, it's not there. Waiting actually happened after sin. Man is broken. Our separation between us and God because of the sin of rebellion in the Garden. That then there began to be a waiting for a fix. But here's the beautiful thing about our God who would bless us with a beautiful sailor like this that God comes on the scene right away in the garden. When he knows that there is going to be a waiting for thousands of years, he actually gives hope. He could have left man hopeless. He could have left man for a couple of hundred years hopeless. But that's not the heart of our God. God stepped right in right after the sin in the garden. He does judge the servant, yes. There is a cost to Adam and Eve, no doubt. But yet, he gives them hope. And because of that hope, that one day he would send someone in flesh to fix the brokenness of their lives, their waiting is simply flavored with anticipation. It's the wonderful thing about Advent. See, we still wait for things, right? It's still part of our life because of sin. But yet that waiting, that of Christ's imminent return at the second Advent, is flavored with great anticipation, just like our waiting was for those months for Selah to come into all of our lives and be such a amazing blessing. Because of that, today when we look at the Advent, when we look at this time of year, yes, we talk about waiting, but it's a waiting that is absolutely flavored with a great deal of anticipation. That we know that Christ has come. He's the Savior of our lives. We understand that. That upon the cross, that He has paid for our redemption. But we also know that there is a second Advent. And so there's a waiting with anticipation on our part for the second Advent when Christ returns and that he makes all things right and he makes all injustices right. So it shows you the heart of our Father. Today as we celebrate the Christ child, as today as we celebrate him as the savior of our lives, it brings us all back to the heart of God. It brings us back to a God that was so loving that he could have left us in a pattern of waiting without hope, but yet he gave us anticipation. Yet thousands of years until Christ came, absolutely. But if you look through the Old Testament, is so flavored with amazing prophecies that continually reminded his people and reminds us of his coming and the heart of God. So I want to take a moment to read to you the Christmas story today from the book of Luke. 
and then we'll pray, and then I'll let you get back to your, your events with your families today. So let me read this, because really, this is what it comes down to. This is the hope that was given to us that flavored our waiting with anticipation. And it says, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world would be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered in his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because of there was no place for them in the end. What an amazing story. What an amazing moment for you and I to grasp today that there are two types of waiting. But what I'm holding today is the product, is the object of our waiting. And the object of our waiting today is that of Christ's return. But we still are waiting, but we live in the knowledge of the heart of the God that we serve today. So for a moment, let's just take a pause in the business of our day and for a moment pray with me, if you don't mind. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this beautiful season of Advent. Thank you for this day, the day of the Nativity, the day that we come together and celebrate. Thank you for family and friends, for your blessings this year, for life and health. God, we pray for those that are suffering and those that have had loss this year in their lives and they're struggling throughout this day that I pray that you would be with them in your presence and your pieces in their life. That we would celebrate the shadows today with, with great um, energy, but yet we would come back to the substance of what this day is about. So thank you, Father, for the, the gift of your son, Jesus. We celebrate that today and we just give you praise in your name. So today on this beautiful Christmas day, I wanna to say to you from our household to yours, Merry Christmas, have a great day, celebrate, celebrate the shadows, but make sure that they always bring you to the substance of this time of year. God bless, thanks for your time.